Hello everyone and welcome to Feng Shui Fixes. I am Kathleen Zemanski. I'm a business Feng Shui master, business astrologer, and the creator of the Time Blazer business management system. So welcome. If you are here with me for the first time today, it would be amazing if you find that this content is something that can help you. We would love for you to subscribe, share, comment, and ring that bell so you don't miss any notifications. So this this month, what I've decided to do is start dripping out some material for you guys to start really looking at your space. I believe that this pandemic that we are currently in, we are really going to continue this phase probably for several months, if not into this time next year. So I really want you to start looking at your space in a very different way. Now in feng shui, there's a basic tenant that we'll talk about that you are a reflection of your space. So whatever is happening in your life right now, uh, you know, whether it be like you're struggling at work or you're thriving at work, whether it be that your relationships are really just harmonious and you really just, everything just seems to be working out fine or it could be on the other side of the spectrum as well. The same goes for health, the same goes for finances. Really, anything that tends to be going um, plus or minus in your life, your space really has a lot to do with that. So what we're trying to um, have you understand during this series is that feng shui really is a very complicated methodology if you are practicing it correctly. I practice classical feng shui, which means I take into, consider into consideration person, space, and time. So the person is the business astrology. And just so you know, right from the, from the get-go that I really do focus on business. Of course, there are personal applications in everything I do, but I also want you to know that it is really a business focus that I have. So I really try to help um, give my clients and you that competitive edge. And that's really how feng shui was really designed. It was okay. It was for power and money, which we all need to have. We need to have boundaries. We want to become influencers. We want to have enough money to pay for services and put, you know, good food on the table, live in a decent um, condition and, you know, be able to provide for the people that we love, right? So you need money to do that. But I really want to take it to that next level. I really want you to have everything in your life really at your fingertips. So is life going to be just la 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 after you do feng shui? Absolutely not. There's a lot of people that are doing feng shui that have been, you know, also affected by this, this pandemic. But what I'm trying to tell you is there are always steps that you can do to help make yourself more empowered have you feel like you really have a choice in what's happening in your life? So this is really how I want you to start thinking about these modalities. This is not a practitioner program. Um, what it is, is a practical program for you to actually start using this information in your life today. This is not where I want you to hit save to watch later because this is very time sensitive. We actually only have a couple of weeks left within this cycle before I'm going to start another cycle in um, around um, August the 7th when we go into the next um, series for, an, for another month. So every month they're going to be changing. Now the biggest difference that I'm going to be teaching you um, today and through this series is what we're going to be doing is we're actually going to be using our body as an antenna. So buildings are antennas, if you will, your front door, the entries that people go in and out, those are antennas. There's different ways in which you can really create these antennas, if you will, to capture in the energy that we're trying to to, to bring into our life. Now, here is 
a bit of a misconception that I talked about early in this in this series, but I think it's very worth mentioning again, is that a lot of people, or even my clients for that matter, before they started working with me, is that they talked about, you know, I want you to come and feng shui my space. And so when I ask for their floor plans, one of the first things I do is run a, an astrology chart for them to see what type of energy they're actually vibrating from a personal level. And that's really important. It really, classical feng shui actually gets into that really unique personalization that I can help you with just by just following this series, obviously. But what we really want you to start thinking about is how best you use your space. But that actually starts outside. So that is something that I really encourage you to do after you have an accurate floor plan. We have a bunch of links down below for running your astrology chart, getting that free compass dial, and then, you know, the timing piece as well, which I actually haven't even spoken to you about yet, but I did say person, space, and time. So the first piece is the astrology. That's what's happening in your life. What are things you need to be watching out for? Are you in conflict with the year or is it you've got a lot of opportunities? Even if you have conflict, you have opportunities. I really want you to know that. And then number two, yes, then we look at the space, but we're looking at from a global, if you will, we're looking at the holistic um, piece of your your the property that your building is at and even further out into you know the extended area like what do you see off in a distance for example those are all important concepts that I'm not going to get into much today but I'm going to leave it up to you to at very minimum just walk around your house after you've superimposed that compass dial onto your floor plan because then I want you to start looking at oh over in that direction where there's some positive energy, I have some things that are a little bit dis in disarray. Why don't I clean that up and get some chi flow into my life, right? And you do the same on the inside as well. But you must, must, must address outside because that's where the chi, the energy originates. It is through our landform of our mountains. It's from our, or if you're in a city um, environment, it, then it's going to be buildings. Buildings are now going to become your mountains. But what kind of jagged corners are going to start influencing you and things like that? Then there could be real water as in an ocean, a river, a lake, a stream, um, a waterfall for, the, for, that, for, for that matter, I, it, or a pond, a swimming pool, a fountain that you may have in your in your yard something like that or in front of your business and but water placement is also very important like it should be in a um, good area now I, I can't cover every you know 3,000 3,000 years of feng shui into one short video but these are the things I want you to start thinking about but for water if you do not have because you might live in you know the center part of a country where you don't absolutely have any water at all then you have to start looking at the road infrastructure the streets and things like that that is going to start giving you, <clears throat> excuse me, then it's going to start giving you some information as well. All right, let's go over to our presentation and we're going to be talking about the East Palace today. We've gone all the way around the entire um, uh, compass, if you will, and we're going to talk about the East Palace today. Um, so let's head on over there. Okay, so we um, always are talking about um, the metal rat because the metal rat is really what is influencing. Now there is short, long-term, uh, in midterm, if you will. So I look at the, I look at the annual energies as, you know, kind of short midterm, but now we are, you know, clearly halfway through the year. So you definitely want to um, start considering like how we're going to, how we're going to really play out the rest of this year. And then in a couple of months, we're going to even start talking about how do you prepare for the upcoming, um, yin metal ox and you're thinking my gosh why are we talking about that already well when you plan ahead you're going to be much you're going to have a much better footing for handling the energies if we can finish up this year properly and then go into the next so we'll be talking about that shortly so um, like I said if you can um, subscribe like 
and ring that bell. Um, but if you're new to us, please go ahead and subscribe to our channel. Now, um, the other thing that I want to talk about is clearly what I just talked about was the person, space, and time. This really is my my business model. <clears throat> Excuse me, I have a little raspy throat today. A little sip of hot tea. Okay, so basically what we're talking about is the person, space, and time. And so what I want you to um, do first, really, is run the charts of people that you are sheltering in place with. You might be by yourself, but if you're sheltering in place with other people, it would be really important for you to run their charts. And there's links below, um, you can see on the screen as well. But <clears throat> what I want you to start understanding is that sometimes when, you know, I mean, obviously, or there's been a whole disruption in even in the way we're living, right? So, you know, people have now started using their home space as a business space. So, you know, it's really that work-life balance and all of that, but there's other people involved. You could have small children that don't understand that you are um, also you know, trying to make a living to provide for them. There could be other people that, you know, maybe are just not as conscious of. They need to be a little bit quiet during your business hours and things like that. So those are the things that you want to find out. Is it like, are they just downright annoying or are they is it something that they're going through from an annual perspective and we just need to wait it out because you know what all of this stuff is life lessons so when you can learn the lesson because truthfully the people that you're living with they're there for a reason as well so let's learn how to um, have better communication with them so one of the ways that I know that you can do that is I've got the GOAT video from my annual event that's linked below, but just go on YouTube and just look at all the animals that are in your natal chart, your year, month, day, and hour of birth, if you know it. And then just look for those videos from 2020, and that will give you a little bit of perspective on why people are acting the way that they do. Um, so the year of birth is going to be about your friends, social circles, and your networks. Your year of birth, month of birth is going to be about your career, what you're best suited at, and your character. So that can start telling you why people are acting the way they are. And then the day of birth, Birth. It's about you, your personal growth, if you will, your mindset and your partnerships. And then your hour of birth, if you know it, it's about your life purpose. And it is also about like your brainstorming. So these are your aspirations. These are your goals that you're trying to achieve. So for some reason, if you're really like stuck on like, oh, I, I just can't get over to that next level. And there could be many excuses for that or reasons. I'm going to even say reasons um, that are out of your control. Like, like this pandemic is out of your control somewhat. You know, there's things that we can do to slow down um, the spread, obviously, but there are things that are out of control when people aren't doing the things that they're supposed to be doing to control the, the spread of this pandemic. So, you know, there's, so be on the side of the solution versus arguing that you want your freedom. The best freedom you can have is being able to get back to work and all of that. So, you know, do the things that you're supposed to do in your country so that you can um, really get your life back on track. So it's really a collective here that we have to think of versus the individual. All right. So um, we talked about, um, let me talk to you a little bit now about the annual dial and the monthly dial. So let's first go over to the annual dial. And we're talking about the East box. It says East five misfortune. And truthfully, this is really one of the more uh, challenging sectors in the whole floor plan. We have like, I'm not really liking the South too much. I'm not liking the North too much, but the, the five yellow, it's called the five yellow. It's the emperor. And the reason why it gets so cranky, um, is because it, it when it's considered sort of the emperor emperor, so it's a very strong energy. And it really likes to reside in that center palace where the seven is located in 2020. It really, the five is most comfortable there when it has to hang out, if you will, with the rest of the peons, if you will, of the world, they get a little bit cranky. The emperor doesn't like to mix with, with um, the, you know, the challenges of life. That's why he has his minions to go out. That's why these other numbers go out and do what they're supposed to do. Well, 
this year and for the last couple of years, it's been giving us a little bit of a challenge because it's no longer in the center palace. And it will go there in a couple of years time. But for right now, what we have is it's located in the east. So we always need to adjust when we have something happening in the east, like the five. So this year we've got the five and really what it can create is if it's disturbed, it can create a plethora of challenges. It could affect dramatically and negatively your finances, even to the point where it, it could cause some bankruptcies. Bankruptcies? <clears throat> bankruptcies. So this is where, you know, the year again is uh, creating a lot of problems for people that, you know, they're in arrears about making payments or house payments and things like that. So this is where we, we're really going to want to be very, very, very careful. All right, now let me go on to the next slide. And the next slide is we are talking about the East and it's the only white box left on the floor plan this year or in this flying star. What we're talking about here is flying star. But we are talking also, I'm also gonna give you some, uh, some advice about the feng shui of the area as well. But let's start in the East and what it is all about. So first of all, I want you to understand that if you can see the five in the East on the right hand side, that is from the annual. So any number you see on this entire um, grid, I want you to know the right hand side is going to be the annual star. The left hand side is the monthly star or monthly energy. That's just a kind of a, an industry term to call these number stars. So it is uh, the one that we're looking at and the one and the five together. Now, what does that combination bring about? That's the discourse of today. So what it brings about, let's first talk about relationships. So it, in, in by far this, you know, the, the monthly flying star is already telling me I'm not liking it so much. Um, and there's very few months that it's going to be favorable, but anyway, this month is not one of them. So again, let's start with, with relationships. So this is going to be, if you are single, this could be, um, advantageous, I guess, if you want to go that far, it's advantageous for, um, hookups or, you know, but it's, it's fleeting. It's just, it's not going to go anywhere. And it's not really even that easy to date anyway, right now because of, you know, social distancing and things like that. But what I wanted to let you know is that it is definitely not, it's going to be a fleeting moment. So you really are going to like, don't put your whole heart um, into something if you are hanging out in the East. Now there's other areas that you can hang out to make a longevity, but if you're spending time in the East, you can expect these things to start piling up. So here's really the trick of it. Get out of the East, go into one of the more favorable sectors, and there's still time to do it. There's still a couple of weeks. Now you may have already activated it. I don't know if, you know, and a lot of people are still, you know, working from their home space versus working um, in their in their offices um, because, you know, we've had to shut down many, many things. So you may have to be multitasking and using maybe a spare bedroom, or you may be using a bedroom and it is now multi-purposing as a as an office. So what I want you to start thinking about, if you're only using a room, then you're going to have to sort of what we call micromanage or and put the compass dial over the room and then just say, okay, then I'm going to get out of the east sector of that room. Because what we want you to do is we want you to take care of yourself and what you have absolute control over. So if you have absolute control over the entire building, then have at it. But if you only have access or control over one room and it's multitasking as multi, you know, a multi-purpose room as a bedroom, an office, you know, whatever, whatever the case may be, then you are going to have to put the dial over just the one room versus the whole house. I actually do kind of both, just FYI. Um, I have it over my main office for the year, and then I also do the entire building. So that way, um, if I need to micromanage within a smaller space, I can do that as well. 
By the way, I do it for my, my uh, master suite as well. So, okay. So then if we're looking at it from a business perspective, uh, oh, well, let me actually go back to the, the personal stuff. Even though I did say right at the beginning, we, we are handling, you know, just mostly business, but you know, let's face it where our, our lives are starting to blend together right now because of COVID. So let me talk about that as well. Now, what can happen, unfortunately, if you start using this area and it gets activated, then what you are looking at is potentially a third party, um, third party involvement, I guess. So another way you can say that is an affair. So, you know, really kind of watch, um, just be careful when you're starting to play with this kind of fire because it, you know, unfortunately when it's kind of a negative like this, you'll probably get found out. So um, I don't prescribe to that that kind of um, that kind of thing, but you know, um, you it's it's your choice. <laughs> but what I'm saying is, just beware that the potential is there if you use this area. Now, from a business perspective, your business may be under literally a microscope or a, or a magnifying glass, if you will. So, whatever you do, just try to try to really like up your game in that perspective and make sure that your work performance is is really like up to par if you will and I really want you to like double triple quadruple um, check your work your contracts reports anything that is going to your that's going to be leaving your hands into the hands of someone else and I really want you to start to reflect on potential blind spots that you might have like what aren't you seeing so before you immediately hit the send button what I would do is I would write out a contract write out a proposal, whatever the case may be, and then just sit on it for maybe a day or so, and then re-look at it to make sure that everything is okay. But I am not spending any time in the East at all this month. I just am avoiding it because I can. I am able to do that. Now, I realize some of you aren't, so that's why we have to mark, micromanage how you're using that space this particular month. Now, to top it off, unfortunately, um, the one and five together is also going to start creating um, some health issues. So your health is a bit at risk here, so we don't want to make that worse so you and really what you really want to watch is um, your stress level watch your emotional uh, you know really kind of like watch how you're handling situations. Um, one of the things that I am finding when I'm speaking to clients and even friends, the ones that are not faring as well are the news junkies. So there is there are there really is science around just, like hitting your sensory systems over and over and over again um, with negative messaging. So we do need to stay informed, absolutely. But you don't need to hear that same news story from 10,000 different perspectives and news feeds constantly and just having your notifications and every time a notification comes you have to see what's the breaking news you know what it's not so breaking anymore but again we do need to stay informed but there is a matter of like maybe a few minutes in the morning or a few minutes in the evening not before you go to sleep because that might keep your uh keep you up at night but basically really what i want you to do is really watch your stress and emotions so find out what your triggers are that's really important it's not only just news it could be just like kind of squabbles between people. So where is your responsibility in that as well, right? Takes two to tango, right? Always. So don't add fuel to the fire. By being in the east, it's adding fuel to the fire. So just avoid that area because there's much more benevolent areas that you can spend than in the east this year. Okay, so, and then I actually want you to also watch a bit about what you ingest because the five is actually um, a, a earth um, energy, so it can kind of create some digestive um, problems. So the one and five together, it's water and, and earth together, and that can kind of get very 
muddy and confusing and you, you just don't you don't even even see straight so this is really what I want you to watch out about okay let's go back to our presentation here and let's go to the next slide so like I said um, in earlier slides or earlier um, videos that I did for this month we talked about the icons being red are the negative ones and the blue are the ones that are positive so as you can see see the east has um that was the best icons I could find were, you know, that third party involvement. So do watch about that. Or just if you're single, it's just going to be, you know, nothing's going to really most likely come to fruition for a long time. Or if it is, it may, may be laden with with um, problems and issues as far as relationships are concerned unless you are both on board about getting through your stuff because everybody comes into relationships with their stuff and not take it out on the other person your business is going to be under um, the microscope and then health issues are here as well and i should have even put in there that you could also lose some money here if you don't play your cards right so we'll just leave it at that for right now but just again when you look at the this um, grid. I'm loving the southeast. I'm loving the southwest. I'm loving the northwest. Those would be my top picks where I'm going to be hanging out in the for the remainder of the month of the goat. Now the goat runs from July 6th to August the 6th and then August the 7th we'll start a new series and we'll be talking about the month of the uh, the monkey month. So um, and that will have its own set of um, information. So so really it is about using this information as quickly as possible so if you find that you're in one of those areas that has red or mostly red in it grab your laptop grab your phone grab your tablet and get into a different area of your space so you can benefit let's go back to what i said right at the beginning if you are experience any financial relationship career health issues one of the reasons could be is that your body is in a negative vibration when you go into a better vibration it is going to help you have more vibrancy. It's going to attract more people to you, more clients to you, and you're going to be healthier. If you put your body in a negative zone, what's going to happen is the opposite. So let's go up and get our vibrancy up. So these subtle tools are very empowering because we are now working with the subtle energies of the universe. And so make your body the antenna to receive this good energy. It doesn't cost anything to pick your body up and move over to a different location, either in your bigger space if you have if you are able to do that, even if it's in a shared space and you're able to go into a different sector just to do, you know, a few hours of work, great, go ahead and do that. All right, I want to show you very quickly what the feng shui dials are if you want to go ahead and um, down, um, get those as a download. So the first one is the annual flying star. So uh, we're only doing the annual here. We're not interfacing the monthly every month. So you're just going to have to do that piece on your own because it changed so quickly. It just makes sense for you to do that. So as you can see, this is how you would superimpose this over an accurate floor plan. Now, the next one is our feng shui dial. And remember, we're talking about the east. Now, the east, as you can see, um, has the red zones. And then over that one middle section, we have some green and red. But I would really want you to think more of this is more of a danger zone than, oh, let's see if I can um, really get you know any juice out of this particular area i would prefer that you just avoid it especially if you already have some things that are awry in your life so the the simple 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 way of using this feng shui dial is to have the um, green areas 
where you want to hang out the most and then you are going to want to avoid the red areas but like i said from this function from the flying star dial we do have some pretty wonderful things that you can use as well and the dynamics of what's happening on the month is really what is going to help you all right the last thing that i do want to or maybe a couple of things yeah a couple of things i want to say is that the timing piece is uh, my time blazer and the time blazer is a personalized energetic calendar that will help you take the right action at the right time make informed decisions about your program product and service launches it's always like staying in the flow so if you can use the the three tools that i talked about which is person space and time you're understanding what's happening in your astrology so then you know how to use your best strengths so let's say for example um you um your month your month of birth is um, not going to be performing so well because of certain animals in your chart. Well, then look at your 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 social circles. How can you elevate your status? How can you you know maybe do something with your website or your social media? That's all the hour of birth. And then if there is something about your career, the month then what is it about your your character that you need to be watching for and then the others along the uh, along the way then we're going to look at the space what do we have available for us to use that's positive use those positive areas and then of course the time is a very important aspect as well so just wanted to let you know as well every tuesday i do a time blazer tuesday and basically what i'm doing is looking at the week uh, in advance so we actually are helping you also to capitalize on the best days of the week or the best hours of the week so you may want to check out that series as well which is also on youtube live and that was posted yesterday so you have you know the entire week but again this is all time sensitive information so you want to use it now so if you're ready to get back up and get things going start using these tools today not tomorrow not next week today because if you're really serious today is the moment and and really now is the time so uh, this is really what i have for you today is to um, really kind of look at all three aspects that are available to you so you become the empowered person you want and choose to be and again we appreciate your viewing and staying and following us so again just go ahead and click that that bell for any updates so you don't miss things that are coming your way as well as subscribe comment and share that would really help out our channel a lot and so we really depend on your your input as well so if you have any questions about astrology feng shui or or the timing aspect with the time blazer and truthfully also the universal gateway which is a manifestation tool that we use in Chinese metaphysics also called Qi Min Dun Jia so any of those questions I am if I can answer them for you in a YouTube video or an upcoming blog I would be absolutely happy to do that so have an amazing rest of the month we'll be back with Feng Shui Fridays or excuse me Feng Shui Fixes in in August and so you got a couple of weeks to use this information. So we'll see you next month with at the beginning of the monkey month. Take care and have an amazing day. Bye-bye.